So do you remember sitting in school and your math teacher told you, hey, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention here because this math will be used throughout your whole life. We're gonna show you how wheel math can help you find the perfect fitment. Let's get into it. What is going on? I am Scott from Koenig. Welcome, it's nice to see you here. Hit that subscribe button because today we're gonna to take you on an illustrious tour of algebra, which will also show you how to find the perfect fitment for your wheels. So in this video, we're gonna to try to make this really simple. We're gonna break it down by pieces and we're gonna show you exactly how to measure a wheel and then figure out the math behind it to know where your wheel is gonna be located when you get a new wheel entire package. So the first thing we're gonna go through is we're gonna go through understanding what the wheel size is. Then we're gonna go into how to measure. Uh, we're gonna then move into how to interpret those measurements in a way that allows you to know exactly what range you have on your vehicle and which way the wheel is gonna move in or out. And then we're gonna also tell you about the math you'll need to know to convert some of these numbers into wheel numbers. And then finally, we're gonna show you why this is important and exactly where this wheel is gonna end up. So we have an example we'll show you. I want you to stay with us because this is gonna be one of those informative videos that you actually will use. All right, so kicking this thing off, let's talk about wheel sizing for a second. This is the first piece we need to address and that is just understanding what's on your vehicle right now. So we're gonna find the diameter, we're gonna find the width, and we're gonna find the offset. Now these are the trifectas that we need to worry about to be able to maneuver a wheel left or right uh, you'll notice that we're not really talking about up and down. And that's because of something else we'll talk about later in the video, but you've heard us say it before, overall rolling diameter. That number's not really gonna change. We're gonna use that as a constant for whatever's on your vehicle now. We're just gonna get concerned with how the wheel moves in width and how that wheel moves in or out. So let's start with the size. The easiest way you should be able to figure out what the size of your wheel is, is either turning the wheel over Usually most companies will stamp them on the back of the wheel, including OE wheels. So it may say 16 by seven and a half, may 17 by eight, 18, eight and a half, whatever, it should be stamped there. Sometimes you'll see it in you know 18 by 8.5 J or P. Don't worry about that, that's your wheel size. So now that you know what you're looking with, let's take the width. The width is gonna be that eight and a half number. That means how much width the wheel is from inner bead to inner bead. Now, we've explained this in other videos, so I'm not gonna to get too far into it, but for today's example, we're just comparing the width of your current wheel and tire package to the width of your new wheel and tire package. So offset is another thing that we have to be concerned with. Again, uh, there are ways to measure this. We've talked about this in other videos. You can go here and figure out exactly what offset is. Uh, Max will put a link up here and he'll take you to a video that will explain what, what offset is. But again, this is gonna be something that is usually stamped in the back of your wheel. It may be in a little circle, it may say ET, it may just be two numbers. And if you have to measure it, we've done videos on that, search the channel, you can go ahead and figure out how to measure your wheel to know where the backspacing or offset is. All right, so lucky for you, our boy Rich here happened to be getting a new set of wheels for his 2022 WRX. And this was a perfect example of a way that we could do some measuring beforehand and then order the wheels that he wanted and then be able to show you the example after they were mounted up to see if we were close. Now, spoiler alert, Rich wanted something that was a little bit more aggressive than the average bear, but we still figured it out and we kind of knew this beforehand. So let's, uh, let's roll into that and see if we can kind of get you caught up. All right, so you see what we're trying to do here? We're just trying to place a straight edge on this wheel and tire. We're placing it on the place that is actually the furthest protruding point. So if it's the wheel or the tire, whatever sticks out the most, that's where we want to put our straight edge up and down on because what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the wheel tire package that's on the car now. How is that going to be when we change the size to a new wheel and tire package? So what we're trying to do is we're just trying to see where are things lining up with the given specs we already know. So we know this wheel is an 18, eight and a half ET55. We're going to put this straight edge at the point where it's going to make contact with the body of the car the soonest. And what we're trying to do here is just simulate how much distance we have till we would hit that point into the existing wheel and tire package. And knowing that math is gonna allow us to figure out how much room we actually have to move out by. So here we're just placing this, uh, this straight edge here. We're gonna measure into the inner tire. Uh, we come out with having three eighths of an inch. We're also checking the inside portion, the part that would crash inbound. So what we're trying to do, and obviously it's a little difficult here, is we're trying to 
go ahead and see how much room from the edge of that wheel and tire package inward uh, on the inbound side is going to kind of be between there and the strut. And once we can do that, once we know what that is, now again, using the wheel and tire math that we're gonna show you in just, uh, just a moment, you're gonna be able to actually figure out how much more wheel and tire you can put on this car. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, uh, we measured Rich's car, we're going to show you what those actual measurements were, and now we're gonna show you kind of roughly how we think the wheel will fit once we get the wheel and tire package on the car. Let's get into that math right now. All right, so when we measured out Rich's front wheel, the one thing we realized is that we had about three eighths on the outbound side, and about five sixteenths of an inch on the inbound side. So let's do this in the math sense. Uh, three eighths of an inch, three divided by eight, you get 0.375, multiply that by 25.4. I know what you're thinking, I'm moving a little quick, but stay with me. 25.4 is the conversion number that you will need to convert standard into metric, inches into millimeters. That's what we're looking to do. If you do that, 0.375 times 25.4, you'll get about nine and a half millimeters. So we have nine and a half millimeters on the outbound side. And then we're gonna have about five sixteenths that we measured uh, from the back edge of the wheel to the strut at the closest point where that wheel and tire package would hit. Five sixteenths on the inside, that's 0.3125 of an inch. We multiply that by 25.4, and that puts us right about 7.93 millimeters on the inbound side. So there's not a great deal of room to move in or out here, um, but we do have a little bit, and we're gonna use, well, we're gonna use all of it. All right, so now let's quickly recap the rear here. Uh, again, the rear is a little bit more tight because of the fact that we have this cladding that protrudes into the wheel well. So on the rear, we measure that we have about a quarter of an inch in both directions. So a quarter of an inch in toward the strut, we have about a quarter of an inch outbound that we can play with. All right, so a quarter of an inch, we all know that that's gonna be 0.25 of an inch, and we're gonna multiply that by 25.4. It gives us about six and a quarter millimeters on each side of the wheel that we kind of have the range to expand on. Okay, so now we need to take these numbers and we need to interpret them and figure out exactly where the new wheel and tire package is gonna sit. All right, so judging by the fact that I have a pen tucked behind my ear, you know we mean business. We're gonna do some wheel calculations here. We're gonna use the numbers that we just received to try to figure out exactly where the wheel will sit on the car after we put our new wheel and tire package on. All right, so let's look at what we're trying to do here. Rich's wheel and tire package that came on the car is 18 by eight and a half and an ET of 55. We know on the front, we're gonna have nine and a half millimeters uh, outbound and we're gonna be able to have uh, about seven or eight millimeters inbound. Now, we're not gonna use all of that. We don't wanna crash on the strut and we certainly don't wanna bury this wheel into the fender. Rich really wants to put an 18 by 8.5, which is the same size, but he wants to go to an ET35. Now this is a super simple example and we're gonna give you some other examples as we kind of get further into uh, this math. This way you can kind of really see how it will work in a variety of different situations. But in this case, Rich is going to decrease his offset by about 20 millimeters. So going to the ET35, 20 millimeters, super easy. It's almost an inch, it's about three quarters of an inch. He's gonna push it out 19 millimeters from exactly where it sits now. That's actually quite a bit. 19 millimeters, we know that we have about nine and a half safe. Let's round it up to 10 and say, take 10. So in my opinion, if we do the math here, this wheel is going to stick out about nine millimeters, right? So that's gonna put him just over a quarter of an inch uh, sticking out. So we know this is gonna be an aggressive look. Rich has argued with me additionally that he wants to go with a more aggressive tire. So expect the tire to actually feel like it sticks out more than the wheel. Uh, in addition to that, you should know that the wheel is probably gonna feel fairly squared up here, fairly uh, flush with the fender line, but the tire itself is actually gonna bubble past. So we know that that's gonna be the look on the front. And on the inbound side, we haven't done anything except decrease, so we're just gonna gain more clearance on the inbound side, so more room between the wheel and the strut. All right, so now let's look at this rear of the car. This, to me, is where the issue is really gonna come in. Again, Rich wants to go with 18, eight and a half, ET35. Problem is gonna be is that when you go to an ET35, 20 millimeters, we've already established we only have about six. So 15 millimeters, I think that he's gonna be rubbing by about 15 millimeters or so. Now, here's the thing. It's not gonna look like it sticks out of the car by 15 millimeters. It's gonna be into that fender cladding by about 15 millimeters. So what I suspect here is that the wheel is actually gonna be a little bit more tucked in on the car than the front, but what we do know is that we're gonna have to clearance that rear plastic cladding to be able to allow the tire 
to kind of articulate in the wheel wells. So again, in this 18, eight and a half instance, he's gonna be using ET35 on the rear. By doing that, the wheel is gonna go 20 millimeters outbound. We don't have that. We only have about six and a quarter. We know that we're gonna end up having the clearance, that rear, the cladding kind of comes into the rear quarter area and, uh, and it's gonna rub. So I've told Rich, you know, look, if you're gonna do this, most likely how it's gonna look is that the wheel looks slightly in from the front. I would've went with an 18, eight and a half ET43, uh, but Rich had some other plans and you know, hey, your own car, your own plan, right? Okay, so let's give you another real world example. We've mentioned this car before. We've been fitting these cars for a while now, Civic Type R, uh, obviously previous generation. So here you can see that the OE specs are gonna be 20 by eight and a half ET60. Uh, and our goal here is to obviously go with a more aggressive wheel. Remember that we don't have to worry about the diameter here because we're gonna make sure that we choose a tire that actually has the correct OE rolling diameter. So right here, what you see is when we do the initial measurements from the stock OE package, we're looking at uh, about an inch that will go to kind of the fender liner. That's about 25.4 millimeters. And we have a half inch from the outer edge of the wheel on the inbound side to the strut. Now for a conservative fit, let's say we take an 18.9.5 ET45. Okay, so assuming that we kept the same exact offset as the wheel came with from the factory and we just increased the wheel by an inch, we would gain a half inch on each side of this wheel. So we would be against the strut and we'd still have a half inch outbound that we can play with. But as we said before, we're gonna go ahead and lower that offset. We're gonna go to an ET45. So we're gonna gain, we're gonna push the wheel out now 15 millimeters more toward the outbound side. So if we were trying to look at our measurements initially from the OE wheel entire package, we would essentially have gained about 15 millimeters on the inbound side to the strut, and we would have pushed the wheel out about 27.7 millimeters toward the fender liner. So here's an example of what this would kind of look like. Remember, we're going more aggressive, but we're not going to the point where the wheel is actually flush with the body line. So let's now look at it if we're gonna do an 18.9.5 ET35. So essentially we're gonna get 10 more millimeters out from where we just were, but let's look at the math again from an OE wheel and tire perspective. Starting from an OE wheel and tire package, what we have right now is about a half inch between the strut and the wheel, and we also have about an inch from the fender liner to the outer edge of the wheel. All right, so we're now we're gonna get into going to something that's more aggressive. We're gonna look for that flush fitment that everybody likes. We know that we have about a half inch to the strut and we have about an inch to the fender liner. We're going to a nine and a half, that's one inch wider than the OE wheel and tire package. So we're gonna initially take 12.7 12 millimeters more on the inbound side and gain 12.7 millimeters on the outbound side. So far we've just went wider, so we still have 12.7 millimeters of clearance on the outbound side and we're now against the strut. So let's go ahead and now do that offset change that's gonna happen. Remember, we're going from ET60 to ET35. So that 25 millimeters is gonna allow us to push that wheel out, right? So essentially what's gonna happen here is we're gonna gain 37.5 millimeters of outbound movement and we're gonna end up gaining about an inch on the side of the strut to the inner side of the wheel. Now again, this fitment is aggressive, but this is what a lot of guys are running, especially for the guys that are on track. This allows the wheel to kind of be able to get all the way out there. It gives your car a really good tight stance, but it is aggressive and if you overtire it, you could encounter a little bit of rubbing. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your wheel and tire package if you happen to have a Civic Type R. All right, so let's give you an example to really test your skills here. Let's see if you comprehended all of this. So let's pretend that we have a race car. And on our race car, we are currently running an 18 by 10 and a half ET25 hypergram. So with our given example, we have about five millimeters of clearance toward the strut side, but we are flush and we have maxed out the wheel fitment on the outbound side. But we wanna be able to run a new wheel. We wanna be able to run a wider wheel because we are a baller and we are gonna push in that class to get a wider tire. Maybe we're going from to like a 315. So maybe you want a Koenig heliogram in an 18 by 12 at a 20 offset. So let's do the width and offset change again, but this time 
for a different perspective. This time we're gonna do it because we wanna be able to run the heliogram 18 by 12. So we need to figure this out in all directions so that we have the proper parts so that we can get this wheel and tire package to fit on the car, not have any rubbing issues, and be able to take it out and pound on it on the racetrack. All right, so let's go ahead and attack the width first. It's the easiest thing to start with. To do the width, uh, we're going from a 10 and a half to a 12. That's an inch and a half, so we divide that by two. We're gonna put half of this on each side of this wheel. 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch is what this wheel is gonna grow by inbound and outbound. So as you can see, man, we are in that strut. Now, let's do this. Let's do the offset change next. The first thing that's gonna happen is we're going from a 25 to a 20. So push that five millimeters outbound. You know how that's the direction it goes. When you go negative or less offset, we're going to be pushing the wheel out. So we can take that off the amount that we're in the strut by. We're in the strut by quarter of an inch. That's 6.25 millimeters. So essentially, we're with that five millimeters of push from the offset change, we are still into the strut by uh, about a millimeter or so. All right, so looking at this outbound side, we're gonna gain 19 millimeters from the initial width. We're gonna get another five from the offset change. We're gonna run an eight millimeter spacer to make sure we have clearance on the inbound side. That's gonna bring us to 32 millimeters outbound past where we were when we started this whole thing. So if you have that 10 and a half inch on the car at that 25, now by going to this 12 at a 20, we're gonna have pushed this wheel out 32 millimeters more and we're now gonna still have the proper clearance that we need on inbound on the strut side. All right, so just to recap here, we've given you a real world example that we did on Rich's car. I'm pretty confident it came out exactly like we thought. Additionally, uh, we've given you two other examples. Hopefully these examples have given you enough knowledge that the math is there, the conversions are there, and you should be able to do this pretty much on any uh, other vehicle that you want to. And the important part of this, like I said, is that as you're planning to change the wheel and tire package on your car, there is no more guessing. There is no more of that. You're not really sure where it's gonna be. Let me buy a set of wheels and tires or buy a set of used wheels and tires, put them on the car and hope that they fit. It's a, it's a game breaker, especially when you're trying to do wheels and tires. And I can't tell you how many times I've had a friend building a car, whether it be something older in the hot rod or muscle section, or even something new in importers, sport compact, race cars, where they've said, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you come over and measure this and tell me kind of what can I fit? And that's a big thing. So having this knowledge is, uh, is an extremely powerful tool when you're building a vehicle. Hope this was a good help to you. If you like this, make sure you throw that uh, subscribe button, a little, you know, gentle nudge and uh, click it. Uh, aside from that, uh, we've been, having fun hanging out with you. We hope you've had fun hanging out with us and we will catch you in the next one.